Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Complicated Things. I just sat down with the artist, Mr. E, and he's really well known for these kind of hundred dollar bill things. And he's a very cool guy. Um, I made some photographs. We talked about his art. We talked about other art, the state of the art world, and some, some other interesting stuff. Let me show you how it went. Still, when somebody asks me, like, well, what kind of art do you do? Or what kind of artist are you? I still, to this day, I don't, I don't know where to fucking start. I usually will look at them and try and decide what type of person they are. And that's how I, I decide how to respond to them. Does it matter to you if somebody likes your art for reasons that you don't maybe think are the right reasons to write? To Depends your art? what their reasons are, you know? But it's... I, it, I, I've not sold paintings to certain people. Because you don't want it in their homes. And yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I don't tell them that. Actually, I've told, I've told two people that. That you just Yeah, don't... I've told them to leave the studio. Yeah, <laughs> I have. Yeah, I don't like the way they're talking to me. And I just don't want them to do you think part, represent me, you know? Do you think part of that comes from, you know, that you're, you're obviously successful and you're able to turn? If you were hungry, do you think you would have done the same? Nah. The hungrier I get, the more willing I am to fucking turn people away. For sure. I, I'm, I'm the opposite. I don't know if that's with other people, but nah. I, I actually, I think I, I care more when uh like if i'm in like you know a hungrier time that's fascinating yeah and i think that the power of no too like you know like when when somebody's willing to pay you for something that you do as your skill and you say no their mind's blown <laughs> as sexy so as evan um but how did the money thing happen so I didn't, um, when I quit the, the last real job I had, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Um, my grandfather had a stroke and I, was, I didn't have a job, right? So I was going to the hospital every day to visit him and I would drive by um, this all white space that had like a for, for rent sign in the window in the town I live in on like the main street. And um, I had a bunch of paintings at the time, you know, like, like just in my garage. And they were all portraits, because at the time, that's, that's what I was doing. I was painting, like, you know, Sinatra and Elvis and JFK and stuff. Like, were, were they selling? Yeah. Um, but I wasn't selling them at a gallery or anything. I was selling, right. the only way I was selling paintings at that point was through the cigar and wine bar that I knew the owner of. Right. And um, I said to him when he opened the place, I said, uh, what, are, what are you doing for art? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, why don't you let me, you know, make some paintings for the place and I'll put price tags on and I'll give you a cut, you know, if I sell them. So that's what I was doing at the time. So, but back to the, the, the gallery story. So, grandpa has a stroke. I quit my job. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, but I knew that I didn't want to do what I was doing, which was a traveling salesman, essentially. Um, but I learned a lot from that job, and I, I love that I did that. But anyway, so I quit that job. My grandpa has a stroke. I'm going to the hospital every day, and I see this spot that looks like it'd be a great gallery. And um, I call the number on it. The owner of the building you know, answers, and um, I told him I want to rent the space, make it a gallery. This is in May, you know, uh, April, May, you know, going to the summer in Florida, which is disgusting um, for a couple months. I told him I'd rent it for the summer. I ended up making a deal with him. I rented it for four months. I turned it into a gallery. I had a party the first night. I invited everyone I knew, you know, and I sold like $10,000 worth of art the yeah. first night. True story. And I was like, shit. Like, it, I went into it thinking, I have all these paintings in my garage. I'll hang them up on the wall. Worst case scenario, you know, I'll have a cool place to hang out with my friends before I go out to the bars that were all on the same street. Right. And I'm like, I'll bring them back, you know, and we can hang out here. That was literally how I was thinking, you know, until I figure out what I want to do with my life. After the first night, I was like, shit, like this, could, I could really, you know, maybe I could do this. So I was doing the show for July 4th with the money. And uh, I was like, I'll, uh, I'm sorry, with presidents. 
and it was going to be portraits of presidents. I said, the money is public domain. Nobody can tell me I can't do it. So I started messing around with the money and then I made them really big. The first ones I actually just like blew up $100 bills and I started painting in all the lines and everything. And then um, I, I, the first ones were eight feet long and I hung up four of them in this 1,000 square foot space in Delray Beach, which is not like a place, it, it was all like watercolors and portrait, you know, like landscapes and stuff, uh, photographs of like, you know, the beach. And I hang up these huge $100 bills and people came in and they either loved them or they hated them. But the people that loved them bought them right, right away. Most of them didn't even ask me how much they were. And I realized like, all right, like I got something here, you know? And like, I did a lot of abstract art in, in high school, spray paint and ropes and tape and shit. And I knew those things would never sell. I thought that's what I enjoyed doing, but I knew they would never sell. And I'm like, at this point, if I'm gonna make a living out of this, I need things that are gonna sell, you know? So at the beginning, I didn't really start it with some, you know, huge philosophical deep meaning behind it. I really didn't. And I'm not really afraid to say that, you know? but. The reason I'm not afraid to say that is because I've developed a deep meaning for it since then, right? And, and gradually over the years, it's changed the meaning to me why I do it too. And it's, it's gotten a lot deeper. And, and that's when like, um, you know, I made the, the little bills, which I'll maybe I should take a photograph, you know, these. So I don't know if this is corny or not to take a photo of me holding one. Sure. Or it is or sure or not. Nah. Um, that's when it really changed. When I made them like regular size and I started going and handing them to people and just getting reactions from them or they'd be like, oh, cool. And they'd hand it back to me. I'd be like, no, 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 you keep that, you know? And um, that, that, that was sort of what, what changed the whole thing for me because people would look at that and they'd be like, what's this? This isn't real. And I, and I would say, you want to hold it? Yeah. Where? Just up a little bit. Huh? Up a little bit. Shh, shut. You know, you, if I, if you take the picture quick, if I um, like put it in the air, you know, of it we floating. Can try. Yeah. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Drop. One, two, three. Oh, that one. This big hundred is right there. Nice. That's kind of cool. I like that. So try I'll it. sell a ten thousand dollar stack of them. You know, which is a hundred bills wrapped right. up. And I sell that for 400 bucks. And I, I always just like came up with that and just put it on, that was the only thing on my website that you could buy. So people start selling them. So the idea is that like, if I give them to someone and someone's like, I don't want this, this is fake. And I, I'm like, what if I told you I was worth more than hundred dollars? And they'd be like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, it it's is. Art. Yeah. So like if I sign it, right? Now it's worth more than hundred dollars. And now it, it teaches a whole lesson of my whole, you know, objective. Fucking genius. That we all have the ability to make our own money, right? And now it's happening more than ever. Like everyone makes their own money, right? Right. All right? I, don't, I, I don't think at a certain point, I don't really think people are buying art. I think they buy the artists. That's interesting. You know, people might not like to hear that or agree with that, but I think that's, you know. So you have if to, you're so asking you, a lot of money for shit, then how, how you else? Have, so you have to be out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, you asked me why I come to New York. I'm bad, man. <laughs> I'm like, you don't really want to buy this, do you? Really? Well, being a salesman, the greatest salesman ever doesn't really, you know, I don't think convince someone to buy their stuff. They're convincing that person to convince themselves to buy it. Right. You know, I don't, I don't, I always say like, I don't, I, this comes out the wrong way probably, but like, I don't really sell art. Um, I just let people buy my art. Look at what's happening with, with NFTs and all digital currency and shit. Are you doing any NFTs though? No, because I'm an artist true to my craft. Um, I, I've, I've actually created NFT projects that I haven't launched. Um, something about it, just I feel like it's, it's here to stay, the technology and everything, but I think the people, for the most part, that I see doing projects now, they're, they're doing them for the wrong reasons. You know, and, and everyone says, oh, like, it's not about the money. It's about the community. Like, I, I think if it was about that, certain ones are, but 99% of them are about the money. Right. 
So you, that's fine, but don't kid yourself, you know? Well, who gets for yeah, I think great art is art that, that you can tell who did it, right. <laughs> you know? Whether it, it could be, you know, the banana tape to the wall, but like, it, it's great when people are talking about it. And, and then, you know, like a lot of people don't even know who did that, right? Yeah, I can't remember his name. So, but in the art world, you know, people know who did it, right? Um, I might not know who took an amazing photograph, right? Like you might know. So it's like, once again, it's just like you, you got to worry about your fans, not, not your critics, you know? That's kind of cool, too. Yeah. Kind of like when you're not looking at me. That's good. Um, yeah, so, so Mr. E, I mean... Yeah. And I didn't really want people to also be able to, like, try to put together who they think I am, right? And I didn't think at that time, like, an artist should have, like, like didn't go to college, right? And an artist, you know, didn't, like like wasn't a, an intellectual person or that had a job. I didn't want people to go and find like my LinkedIn, you know? Right. That was pretty good at the time. Right. Um, so I felt like I was like leaving, you know, that behind, right? In sort of like a Bruce Wayne, uh, Batman type of way, right? Like mystery was separate. I was keeping it separate. But you weren't, you weren't covering your face and shit. Like no, no, I never did. Never did. It was no, just, no. It was, I didn't tell people my name, though. I, I still don't now, like, tell people my name unless I, I really know them. You know, I don't... So you introduce yourself? No, you? no, 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 no. No, I say Evan. And if I'm in, like, a, a, a setting where I know people only know me as Mr. E... You'll just be Mr. I'll, e. I'll, I, yeah, I'll, I'll say E. I, I will never be like, yeah, nice to meet you, Mr. E. So I, I presume, like, you know, people call you, what's up, E? Yeah, like that's I don't more like comfortable. That, I, you don't like it? Because that's more comfortable for me. <laughs> I was at dinner last night. This guy's like, so should I call you Mr. E? I want to call you Mr. E. I was like, e, call me whatever you want. I'm like, I, I don't really, you can call me Evan though. Like, I, I thought that would make him feel more comfortable that I was like, yeah, call me by my name, you right. know? And then he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to call you Mr. E. I'm like, just call me. And I was like, I don't like E. I don't know why. Do you think people called Meatloaf Loaf? <laughs> Do, no, I think. People that knew him, I, what, he had a real generic name too, right? Like Mike or something, I can't remember what that is. his name. Um, Is that they called him that? No, I think maybe Meat. Meat. Yeah, not meat. Loaf though. Yeah. Meat, meat probably, right? Meat. What's up, Meat? meat yeah. You're on stage. Our, our, well, that was our, part of the mystery, our, our, obviously. Right. Right, the, the pun, the play on like, you know, I like calling people Mr. This, Mr. That, right? And um, E, obviously, Mr. Evan, Mr. E. You don't know how many people have said to me, like, whoa, mystery. Have you ever thought about that? Like, like the word mystery and mystery. And I'm like, no, holy shit. That's a good one, you know? Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, that was a new idea that we had for complicated things, to sit down with somebody and actually film the, the photo, photo shoot and see what they had to say. If you liked it, please do the like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, please do the like and subscribe. If you hated it, please do the like and subscribe. But if you do have any ideas of who, who you would maybe want us to talk to during a photo shoot, let us know. We'll get right on it. See you next time.